Hi, everybody. My name is Nizar. Nice to meet you. Uh, I work for Airbus. We build, we build planes. Um, and we're here to uh, talk a bit about APIs, since it's API days, and how APIs help us build aircraft. Um, before we jump on to the presentation of um, you know, what is Airbus, I'd like to tell you a little, a little story I've, I've lived like a bunch of weeks ago. I was on a business trip to India, and I was in, on immigration, and then there was this tough-looking guy at the desk. He told me, like, which company you work with? I told him Airbus. He told me, like, Airbus? Isn't this, like, you know, the bus that takes you to the, to the plane? I told him, no, dude, you, you, work in, uh, you work like in an airport. <laughs> Why do you say that? So anyways, uh, I'll let Adrian introduce you a bit more about Airbus so you know what we do. Thank you, Nizar. So, uh, first, I would like to give you some context uh, regarding uh, the aviation globally and Airbus. Um, so, we don't realize, but the aviation industry has a huge impact on our society and our world economy. I don't know if you remember uh, a few years ago the Icelandic uh, volcanic eruption. Uh, it impacted the stock market and trade because people are traveling for tourists, but also a lot for business. And aircraft are carrying tons of freight uh, every day. In the world today, there is 1,400 um, airlines um, um, taking care of a total of 26,000 aircraft in the world. And they are carrying every year 3.6 billion passengers and 51.2 million tons of freight, which is really, really huge. The aviation industry um, supports uh, around 62.7 million jobs, and we estimate that the total impact on the economy is 2.7 trillion dollars per year. So Airbus is a commercial aircraft manufacturer, but not only. We are also producing helicopters, um, satellites, launchers, and milita military aircraft. It represents a total workforce of 129,000 employees, and the revenue of Airbus is uh, 59 billion euro per year. Knowing that 75% of those revenues are mainly done by Airbus commercial aircraft. An Airbus takes off and lands every 1.4 seconds, which is really huge. And in order to achieve that, uh, Airbus um, sold more than 18,000 aircraft, and we have delivered so far more than 11,000 aircraft. So it means that we have a backload around 7,000 aircraft to produce, which, is, which represents nine years of production, with our current rate, which is around 60 aircraft per month. So we deliver every day two aircraft. It seems very uh, less, but if we compare it to a car, uh, in a car we have around 30,000 parts. On the A320, we have 1,200,000 parts. And on our wide body, the biggest commercial aircraft uh, in the world, the A380, we have more than 7 million parts, which is really, really huge. Um, as I was saying uh, before, uh, we have nine years of production, and some airlines are not able to wait nine years to get their aircraft. So, we really have to produce more aircraft and faster, but we have to keep the quality, the same level of quality and security, because it's what made the reputation of Airbus. Today, Airbus is the leader in terms of um, manufacturer of commercial aircraft, but we are more and more challenged by disruptive competitors. Based on new technologies, they are entering in the market and building new business models. So we have some companies like SpaceX with their launchers able to come back on Earth. We have also Uber. Uber is doing automated cars, but also flying cars now. They are working on that. We have also some projects like Hyperloop. We, 
which are really challenging us because they want they estimate that the module could reach 1,000 kilometers per hour, which is faster than an aircraft. So Airbus, to keep his, his competitiveness, has really to accelerate his innovation cycle and reduce the time to market. So since more than two years now, we are building self-service digital platforms for big data, cloud, UI UX, mixed reality, IoT, and also APIs. We are trying to optimize all our process in Airbus. We manage business information and data uh, really as an asset. We really want to get back the value of the data to the different business and create new services thanks to those data. Adopt really the DevOps at scale and autom automate everything. That's why since one year and a half, uh, we really have an API-first strategy at Airbus. And Nisa will tell you what is uh, our vision in terms of uh, APIs in Airbus. Thanks, Adrian. So our vision about uh, APIs here at Airbus is one of uh, collaboration and trust. So these are, I think, the two key words we need to remember here. Uh, so our platform and technical capabilities uh, provide self-service for our different clients and businesses to be able to produce APIs that serve best the interest of aircraft production. Um, so the story of our API vision is one of uh, exposing the data that is locked within the old systems, unlocking the data, building the services, and heightening the efficiency. We're not thinking today about going uh, B2C or B2B or whatever, we are thinking about getting more efficient at what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. The APIs that we try to produce uh, in, our, in our API strategy are reusable assets, like Adrian said earlier, that can be accessed anywhere from any device at any given time. So that's the core idea that we have behind our API vision. So uh, let's jump on to the next one. So the main cha with, with this vision comes many challenges. So uh, self-service is something that is uh, pretty much mainstream, we, we, could, we could say, to some extent. I've heard uh, many talks talking about self-service, uh, but with self-service comes many challenges. The first challenge is the disparity level between the people that produce APIs on your platform. You have people that, will be, uh, that are really API-friendly, that know what they do, that build really good APIs, strong APIs, reusable assets. You have other people that are still stuck in the SOA period and that will build non-reusable APIs. But it's part of the game. Since it's self-service, everyone benefits from it. So our job here is to help people get to the same level, to heighten the level, get it, get it to a pretty standard one, uh, to have the, most, the biggest number of reusable assets. Second part is we need to take into account the history of Airbus. So we've been building planes for the past 50 years now. So we have uh, legacy, legacy uh, manufacturing, which comes with also legacy platforms. We have robotics, and we have the factory of the future, which we are building for the, for the next 20 years. APIs help each single manufacturing process. So it helps the old one with machine-to-machine, automated services, stuff like that. It helps the one of today, and it will help the one of tomorrow. Um, but to understand more what we are doing concretely on APIs, you need to understand the manufacturing pr process of a plane. So uh, like Hadrian said, uh, if you take the A380, it's seven million pieces. So pieces are built all around the world. So you have pieces in Spain, pieces in Italy, pieces in the UK and pieces in Germany, in France, etc. Uh, and pieces are all sent to a single point, which is called a final assembly line. The final assembly line is the place where you send all the pieces, and you have people that, pretty much like a Lego, build the, build the plane itself. They assemble it. Um, so in this final, as, final assembly line, you have what they call stations. So when you send all the pieces, you have many pieces that go through each, each single station, 
40, 50 stations, depending on, on the plane model, and then the final plane is disassembled. So what you get from it out of here, and this is really important, is it's a really complex manufacturing process which involves logistics, it involves uh, planning, and it involves uh, efficiency. So it involves all of these to build the plane in itself. So the API strategy that we put in place is one that supports this one. Um, really, when, you, when we think about it, it's a bit of the best of both worlds. It, it, uh, it takes into account how uh, startups are organized on one, on, one, on one side and how uh, manufacturing is organized on the other. So we have a core team which is based in Toulouse, which builds our platform. So this platform is what supports all that is happening. Uh, this team is also helping the people that are onboarded with a self-service approach get better, heighten their level, and have re uh, more reusable assets. And also develop this more strategic programs, and we have evangelists like Adrian here, uh, which go to the business and get on to this uh, cultural shift that we've uh, heard a lot about since, since this morning. Uh, to support all this, we have uh, what we call satellite teams. These teams are in the factories themselves. So we've heard a lot about how APIs and business need to interact. So we will have people going into the factories themselves, doing shadowing, user research, all the design principles to understand what are the pain points, what are the key things that we need to do to help us uh, build APIs that are relevant and help us build more aircrafts and of better quality, if that's possible. And finally, we have an expansion team in uh, India that will do the more of the development of APIs. So, so far on self-service approach, each, each person develops its own API. But you have projects that like uh, need funding, that have a good potential for, uh, for reuse, and we'd be more than glad and happy to fund these projects to build on top of them APIs that matter. Um, I'm going to leave Adrian uh, give you a concrete example of one of two use cases we built this year, uh, and that's it. Okay. <clears throat> so I will present the Sun Laser Lighthouse project. It's a project that we have supported this year. Um, so some context. Um, as Nisa was saying, uh, many parts are coming from different locations in uh, in, uh, in Europe, and they are assembled in Toulouse. And sometime during the transport. Uh, some parts are damaged, and so we have to change them. So then we create a non-conformity. So this non-conformity are noticed by uh, people working in the quality, and they have to enter this non-conformity in the information uh, system in order to have a status and to track the non-conformity. And the issue is that they had to enter this information in a room on a, a computer which is far from the aircraft. So they were really not efficient. They had to work a lot during the day. And when they were entering the information in the information system, they were not in front of the issue anymore. So um, the IT team of manufacturing came and said, OK, you, are, you have a, an API platform. It's great. Uh, we'd like to create APIs uh, in order to have a mobile application to allow uh, the blue colors and quality guys uh, to see the, the non-conformities, the status, and everything in front of the issue on the aircraft. So we have provided to this team uh, our consultancy and training and so on in order to develop all the APIs on the platform. Then we have also another project um, which involves the logistic team. and. As we have non-conformity, we have to change parts. So this is impacting our port, um, part uh, stock. So they wanted to redesign their UI, and they say, OK, so we have information thanks to APIs regarding non-conformity. So for their use case, they reused um, the APIs that has been developed by the manufacturing team, um, IT team. We are also uh, working a lot with IoT. Um, in order to track all the parts, the planes, the different modules, cars on, uh, in, uh, in Toulouse. Um, we have RFID on all the parts, uh, so when they are coming in Airbus, they are crossing a portal, and we can track all the parts 
make sure that we have received all the parts. So we are making every, um, APIs for them in order to support them. So I hope it was interesting uh, for you. And if you have any question, uh, you are welcome. <laughs>